Hello everyone, I'm Pedro Matos. I will to the lecture the lecture today is about angles. What are angles? How do you measure angles? What does this measurement of angles has to do with power coordinates? What are radians? Today we will discuss all these topics. Uh, these are very elemental topics. However, I want to give you a more uh, structured way to think about them especially the unit radian okay so let's start what are angles well you can see in your fingers two fingers you make an angle at your arm you have an angle the walls in this room make an angle so from these examples you can see what are the essential properties of an angle you see, when you look at your arm, for example, you have one, s one single point, and then the arms make two lines intersect at this point. So uh, the essential features of an angle is two lines intersecting at one point. This is the geometrical figure. So an angle is something that you can see. Now, when you look at this picture, uh, there is two sides to it. So, there is the outside, outside of the angle, and of course, the inside of the angle, this part. Okay? So, when we want to attach a number to this figure, you, as we shall see in a minute, you have to decide which one of these sides, which one of these sides are you going to use to attach that number? Okay? Um, so, how are we going to do this? Uh, in order to measure the angle, let's we will see several ways, but let's see the most basic one, the most intu intuitive one. When you look at this picture, you can think about the process, about the process that it takes to generate this angle. In the beginning, you have the single point, and the lines coincide, are superimposed. And then you just open the angle, you see? One step later, you are like this, and later, you are like this. The final state, uh, still not the final state, but if you keep rotating, you are like this, the final state of the angle, okay? So there is a process, it's a process of rotation. So you might use this to measure the angle, to measure how much rotation are you imposing on, the on these lines to generate an angle from this state until the final state. If you now assume, if you assume that the full rotation means to open this and go all the way around, you can now say, well, how much rotation there is? Well, it's one fourth of the total rotation that you can in, uh, in, uh, introduce. Okay. Uh, think about th this for a moment. What it means to measure actually? What is measurement? To measure something means to compare. So, if you want to compare, what we are actually doing is to compare uh, the process, how much rotation you have to give, with respect to one full rotation. Okay. And that com in from comparing these two, you arrive at a number which we will call f. f is a number between a real number, which in this case is one fourth. Okay, one fourth of a full rotation. Okay. Now, let's look at this uh, number from a different point of view. Instead of thinking about uh, the amount of rotation that you have to induce you can think about putting a, a circle around you can put a circle here it is the circle a and now you just say well you just measure uh, like, like in wh when eating pizza uh, you have the full pizza uh, and you just say well this slice is one fourth of the entire thing so this f is also the size of the slice of pizza that you are going to eat with respect to the whole pizza. So once again, you are comparing how much is a slice with compare with everything. So measurement is al also always comparing. 
you have to, you have to choose a reference uh, to, f uh, to compare. The reference now is the entire PISA. Okay? So this leads us to introduce uh, an angle measurement. W uh, an, um, the angle measurement, let's call it theta, theta in uh, measured in revolutions, will be f times one revolution. One revolution means you give and uh, uh, rotate entirely. Okay? Uh, one, one complete revolution. Okay? Uh, from this definition, we let's give exa examples. Here we have one fourth, so theta revolution means one fourth of a revolution. If you have uh, like this, you have the circle, you have the circle, uh, how much do you think? Just look at it, you have two slices of pizza, so each it, this, this f must be f equals one f. So, the theta revolution our measurement, the number that we attach, must be 1f, the revolution. If it's not clear, by the way, the angle we are measuring is this. So if I just shade the region, like this, this is the angle. You are using the white part to, uh, to use it to attach a number. Okay. So this is a straight angle, this is a right angle. Uh, well, if you give a complete revolution, what do you have? You have this, like this. Okay? You just went way the way all the way around, so theta revolution will be what? One revolution. Okay? Is this clear? Uh, this is quite easy to to just attach. No, notice the, the you are measuring in multiples of one revolution, our unit, our uh, the full pizza, essentially. But there is a Newton that you probably know much better than this re revolution, which is degree. degree. Let's see where degree comes in. The degree, uh, you can make the following assumption now. This is a second way to measure angles. Let's put in red, because it's very important. You just decide that when revolution corresponds to 360 degrees. You just uh, assume this. It could be any number, but let's just use 360. Now you have a correspondence between units. If you have a correspondence between units, you can convert from units from one side to the other. How do we do this? Well, you just multiply by F. You have F multiply by one revolution equals F times 360 degrees. Let's just degrees, degrees. So instead of one complete revolution corresponds to 360, a fraction of a revolution that is F times one rev is must correspond to that fraction times 360 degrees. This allow, al allows you to convert. By the way, let's give examples. Uh, if you have, for example, let's just take an example, a simple one. Uh, uh, let's look at, uh, it could be here, okay? If you have uh, theta rev equals one fourth, this means one fourth times one rev, one revolution, well, but one revolution is 360. So one fourth times 360 degrees. Okay, how much is this? It's 90. 90 degrees. Here, the same thing. If you have here, uh, when uh, the angle is measuring in revolutions, this means that we have one half times one revolution. Okay, but one revolution is 360. So this is uh, one half times 360 
degrees, which is 180 degrees. So you just switch the angles, the, 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 the your, your reference, you see? Um, <coughs> so your F is essentially telling you uh, um, uh, the fraction, but the fraction can be converted, can be converted either in revolutions or, or in degrees. Okay. Uh, by the way, how do you do if you want to go the way, the, the other way around? If you just want to convert degrees into revolutions, well, this implies that one over three sixty revolutions means one degree, right? And that means that you have, if you have uh, something like uh, uh, forty five degrees, well. This is just a, a short end for what 45 times 1 degree, but 1 degree is 1 over 360 revolutions. So we have 45 times 1, one over 360 times what? Times rev. Okay? Is this clear? Okay. How much do you think that, I that is? Well, 360, let's just look at it. If you don't see immediately, you, well, you could do the calculation, but if you don't see it immediately, uh, you, 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 can, you can make a picture. You can make a picture, that, and the picture tells you what you think. For example, notice that 45 is just one half of 90. So here it is. This is an angle with a number, 45 degrees. Well, how many do you think there is in an entire circle? Okay, you have eight, right? If you have eight, that means that this is one eighth of a revolution, okay? Okay, so this is a converging factor. Uh, allows you to go back and forth. You just rearrange as you wish or you multiply by f, uh, and, you do then, and then if you have f, you can also convert between one side and the other, okay? Let's now tackle the, the radian. It's more sophisticated, the radian. The radian, let's just skip this. Uh, let's just focus on it on this picture. We will we will you have the, the angle again, the geometrical figure, you have the angle. Let's just erase this as well. Uh, you have the angle and then we are going to draw some circles around centered at the origin around this angle. Here they are. Let's just make three. Okay. You can see that these arcs three arcs. You can have more if you draw more circles. Each arc determines the angle. Okay? If you give me the length of this arc, you, I can tell you what the angle looks like. Okay? So you, in principle, you can use these arcs to measure your angle. However, we are interested in the angle measurement that is ind independent of any length scale of the, of the problem. That is, independent of any circle that you choose. So we must look, look bet uh, better at the picture and to find that quantity. The crucial observation is this. It's a very well-known formula. You should don't know this since kinder kindergarten. The perimeter of a circle, what it is? What is the perimeter of the circle? Is 2 pi r, okay? But if you, if you rearrange this, you get 2 pi equals the perimeter divided by r, okay? The radius of the circle. 
What does this mean? Let, just let, let's look at it. Let's look at our circles. The smallest circle has radius r1, the next one has r2, and then it has r3, the largest. If I multiply this by f, notice the numerator, you have fp. What is fp? Let's just think about it. If p is this distance, the perimeter, and f is the fraction, then it must mean that fp is the length, the arc length. So this is s. You have s3 or s2 or s1. It depends on the perimeter. So this is must be s. Arc length is on the numerator. R is the radius of the circle. Okay? But that means, notice, that f times 2 pi is independent. It, it is independent of the, the uh, of the radius of the circle. So we have our unit. Okay? So s divided by r is the s, is exactly what we are looking for. So by definition, theta in radians Uh, must be uh, s divided by r, okay? Which could be rewritten as f times 2 pi, okay? Let's just look at our examples again. Um, I think I, uh, I erased it, okay. Let's me, let me make it again. So we have this circle, this is our angle, is one fourth. Uh, in this situation, uh, our f is one fourth, so theta radians, radians, rad, is one fourth to pi, which is pi over two, okay? Okay, so this part, This angle, we attach it the number pi over two. To this situation, the num we do the same thing. So theta rad must be what? It should be f. That is one half times two pi, but that's just pi. Is a number, pi. Okay. To the complete revolution, you have theta rad equals f, but the f is one, so you just have the number to pi, okay? Let's just look at what we have done. Notice, it's a number. You just attach a number. Previously, we attach a number, but also a unit of reference. You see, either the revolution or the degree. Here, here, okay? But now, we just have a number. Here, pi over 2, 2 pi, and pi. This is all good. It's definition. It just measures the, 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 the angle. Uh, however, it might generate problems. Why it is? Because, you see, when you want to sum quantities, you want to sum quantities that are of the same nature. For example, if you want to sum two distances, uh, first you have to make sure that you are on the same unit, so you, you just sum meters with meters, not meters with centimeters. You have to also al always convert to the same unit. And second, you just don't convert, you just don't sum wi meters with seconds, for example, or temperature with seconds. You just don't sum quantities of the different nature. In the same uh, way, you just sum degrees with degrees and revolutions with, re with revolutions. Okay. But what about radians? The, these two numbers, 2 pi and pi over 2, they are dimensionless. There is no units. So you might run into the mistake of summing this number 
with something that you should not sum with, okay? So you have to be careful. <laughs> you have to be careful. Uh, 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 you have to be careful about uh, uh, what they mean, because it's just a number. However, uh, there is something we can do. We can do the following. Uh, but first, before into going that, we have to analyze. We have to analyze this formula a little better. Let's make some dimensional analysis of, of, the, of this formula and to, and to see what we can do to solve this, this, this problem, okay? So, uh, let's just ana analyze the R first. R. Let's just uh, assume that R is, I don't know, uh, 3 centimeters. So what is the magnitude of R? The magnitude of R, written like this, is 3. The unit, or the, uh, the unit of R is centimeter. Okay? Well, you can abstract this thing and in sim in simp in simply ri uh, write that R is the magnitude times its unit. This is times unit. This is general, this is in particular. Of course, if 3 is, uh, instead of centimeter, it could be kilometer or meter or, or inches, it doesn't matter. So in general, you have this, okay? Okay. Uh, let's do the same thing for S. S is here. So S, S can be written like, it's FP, right, it's FP, so it must be uh, p, I the perimeter is given by 2 pi r, so this is f times 2 pi times r. Well, but r can be written like this, so you can write it like this. The magnitude of r times the, the units of r. Okay? In this example, we could do Let's make another color. In particular, just to give an example, if f is, for example, I don't know, uh, one f, you could write to f one f times two pi times this. Well, but this is just times three centimeter. Okay, so this the here is just an abstraction. Uses uh, a general formula like this. Okay, is that this is. These are the general formulas. Well, if you can in make the dimensional analysis for S and R, we can make for theta rad. Let's do it. Theta rad, S, we just substitute. So it's F times 2 pi times the magnitude of R times the units of R divided by, well, what's, what's written here? The magnitude of R times the units of R. Let's just rearrange and you have F to pi times this. Okay? The magnitude of R, units of R. Okay. Let's interpret what you have, what this means. First, before going to this, let's just look at this. On the numerator, this on the numerator you have the arc length of the angle, which is f two pi times r with its units. Okay, everything is fine, but you can look at it in a different point of view. This is this means that the arc, the arc length is 2 pi larger than the arc length of r times the dimensions of r. Okay? I would make a picture to make this clear. For the smallest circle with uh, radius r1, let's draw an arc with a length r1. Here it is, in red. So this arc has the same length as the radius. Okay, R1 and R1, 
okay? What this, what this is saying is that the arc length, when f is, for example, pi over 4, in this case, uh, in this case pi, uh, f is pi over, uh, f is pi 1 over 4, uh, then uh, the arc length in blue is 1 fourth times 2 pi, okay, which is pi over 2, larger than R, R1, okay? This is what this means. You just, you look at this and you say, well, that's the arc length. Well, the arc length is f2 pi greater than this arc length. So we are comparing two arc lengths, essentially, okay? On the denominator, you just say that, well, the radius has this size, okay? With this, with this, with this uh, very clear, now let's look at, it, at this. So while we're rearranging, you can look at this from, from dif different point of view. Our theta rod is in fact f times 2 pi times the ratio of an arc whose length is the radius divided by the radius. Okay? Is the ratio of this red line, the length of this red line, the red curve, divided by the length of this line, the radius. Okay? Notice, notice it, this is a dimensionless unit. Uh, that's why you, you can equate this to 1. Th that is, you can write this as just f to pi. That's what we have done prev previously uh, here. Without uh, for any further analysis, you just write it like, like this. And that's why these numbers are dimensionless. Because you have calculating the ratio of two lengths, but the ratio of two lengths has no units. Okay. However, our lengths of different nature. Uh, they are uh, well, not different nature. But they are just one is curved uh, and the other is a line. Okay. Not different nature. Okay. Now let's let's just look at uh, what we can do uh, to fix, to prevent our ourselves to make this mistake. Because this is, this is a, a number, and we want to make it clear that it is actually a number that's measuring an angle. So what we do is instead of drawing away this part, you just keep it. You just keep it on the formula. Instead of going all the way and simplify this from here to here, you just don't. You just keep it like this. And you introduce a short end because this monstrous thing should be simplified. So we call this one rod. Okay? What this means is that one rod is actually a dimensionless quantity. It's one, essentially. So, you, you want to keep it on your, uh, on your, f on your uh, results as a reminder, as a reminder of where f to pi comes from, and if you know wh uh, where it, it comes, where it comes from, you know what it means. So two pi, if you write two pi, you, do, you, you just have two pi, two times pi. What uh, what what does it what does it mean? Well, but if you write two pi rad, now you know, it's two pi times that one unit, but that unit is the arc length divided by the radius. That must mean that 2 pi rad is an angle, is measuring an angle. The same for 2 pi, for pi. You should, instead of, of pi, you just write rad, 2 pi rad. Okay? E the same thing here, pi over 2 radians. Okay? Many times, there is a question, wh well, Sometimes the, the rod is not there, sometimes the rod is there. What, when should I or shouldn't I include the rod? Well, the rod is just a, a reminder to make, uh, to make you sure uh, that you know what you're talking about. So when you are absolutely sure what you're talking about, you just drop it. That's it. Okay? It's a dimensionless, dimensionless number. But if you're not sure, 
If you have a complicated formula, just keep the rod. It, it will be helpful. Okay? So, now that you understand what rod is, what it means to measure an angle in this dim dimensional mass quantity, uh, let's try to see how to convert. How to convert between our uh, degrees and uh, radians. Okay, if you want to convert between units, you need a correspondence between units. What correspondence can we do? Can we make? Well, um, by the way, uh, I just f rem rem remember something, something important. Before going to the conversion of units, okay, this is important. This is very important. Um, before going there. Uh, notice that theta rod is S divided by R but the circle that you choose to measure S and measure R can be any circle any circle that you see as long as it's centered at the origin so that means that theta rod Is, is equal to S1 divided by R1, S2 divided by here R2, and S3 divided by R3, and so on. You choose any one, make the ratio, it will work. Okay? In particular, there's a special circle. What special circle is this? Mm. It's a unit circle. The unit circle is a circle of radius 1. Here it is. A any unit that you want. If the circle, if you use the circle of radius, wa radius 1, let's just call it, uh, let it call it uh, S divided by R. Uh, the circle of radius 1 let's just talk where is the formula ok uh, let me see ok I think you can see you can see here I, have no, I need more space let me just erase this I need more space. So S divided by R, but S divided by R is this. Okay? So this is... Just pick another color, because this is not good. <coughs> if R is equal to 1, it means the magnitude of R is equal to 1. So this must be f to pi r divided by r. Okay? Which is one radian. Is this clear? So we have to f to pi radians. Okay? But f to pi times 1 is the 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 length the arc length on a unit circle okay so this is in fact the uh, the, the magnitude of s on the unit circle times rad i don't know if you if you you follow this uh, correctly uh, what i mean is is this uh, these ratios that you can compute for any circle come in radians, okay? But the numerical value that you compute, which is, by the way, f to pi, is exactly the same numerical value that you would get for the unit circle, for the arc length of the unit circle, okay? This is very important because it means that uh, on the unit circle, uh, uh, this, the two things almost uh, 
ad, uh, uh, indistingu indistinguishable. Uh, talking about angle measurement in radians or talk about uh, the, the arc length, numerically, d without units, just a number, is the same thing. So, for example, when you say, for example, uh, this angle measures 2 pi over 2 radians. Okay, imagine delta rad is pi over 2 radians. Okay, you can, you'd use, any, uh, you ca you can use any circle to compute this. Well, but that number, pi over 2, that number here, pi over 2, is the same thing as the number of s of this circle, the, the unit circle. So this number and this number are exactly the same thing, okay? So this is another way, uh, another interpretation that you can give to theta rod. Instead of this ratio, you can just think about it as the length arc length on the unit circle. Numerically, of course, because the, 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 the angle is dimensionless. So you, just w you are just talking about the number, not the unit. Okay. Let's now go back to the conversion. Conversion between uh, radians uh, and degrees. Uh, to do that, we need yes, you need to co you need to a correspondence between the units. In fact, in general, if you want to converse between units, you need a correspondence between units. You need a formula of the kind. One uh, in this case would be uh, two pi radians. Complete revolution, yeah, is the same as 360 degrees. And if you know this, you can convert any angle from radians to degrees and degrees to radians. Let's give an example. Pi over 2 radians means pi over 2 times 1 rad. But what is 1 rad? Well, this formula tell, tells us what is 1 rad. One rod, we divide both sides by 2 pi, so this is just 1, so we have 360 divided by 2 pi degrees. Okay, so you just substitute here, so we have pi over 2 times 360 times 2 pi degrees. Okay, so the pi goes away. You have 360 divided by 2, 180. 180 divided by 2, it's 90, 90 degrees. So, you have 90 degrees corresponding to pi over 2 rad. Okay? What if you go the, the other way? Let's see. Mm, let's just erase here. getting a bit messy. For example, the, uh, our 45. If we have 45 degrees, what that means is 45 times 1 degree. But, well, but you can, you know what 1 degree is, uh, how 1 degree is related to radians from this expression, how? Oh, because you divide by 360. 360 divided by 360 is 1, so you have 1 degree. Must be equal to 2 pi divided by 360 radians. And now you say su substitute, you have 45 degrees equals to 45 times 2 pi divided by 360 radians. Okay? Well, 45 divided by 360 is 1 8, so you have 1 8 to pi radians, which means pi over 4 radians. Okay? So again, 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians. Okay? As long as you have this, you can make all these conversions very easily. Okay? Uh, okay. Let's just, uh, let me just look again at my notes. 
not to, we have seen how to convert between units Um, okay. Well, one final comment before going to co co power coordinates. One final comment. Notice that we have been measuring the angles. Is an angle. Let me, let me just erase first. Let me just erase first. Otherwise, this is very confusing. If you have uh, an angle, a fi the fi angle, the figure. If you have an angle, like this. Okay. Well, let's just choose this part. This is the outside. Probably can see. This is the inside. Okay. Or like this. Let me just put uh, first like this. And like this. The outside. Okay. It is a rotated version. Okay, I keep, I can keep drawing more and more uh, rotated versions of this angle. But uh, what uh, what I want you to observe is the following: is that uh, uh, the same number that you attach here is the same number that you attach to this angle, to any angle, in fact. You can attach uh, all the same number as long as it's just the same angle, but uh, in different directions, different orientations, the number that you attach is always the same. Okay, it's, my, it's like you have different uh, clones of the angle. You just uh, different versions, uh, different versions of the the original angle, just slightly different. Okay, so this means that essentially, um, uh, it's like in nature when you a biologist classifies uh, uh, the animals or the uh, the living beings into species because they have some common characteristics. Here, our creatures, okay, our creatures that resemble Pac-Man, yeah, our creatures, uh, what they do they have in common? Well, it's the size of their mouth. As long as the size of uh, of the, their mouth is the same. These are always uh, uh, all, uh, all these these animals have the same the same number attached the same the s have the same mouth size let's say uh, they are the same animal essentially okay okay uh, so we can usually put our angle in the most more convenient position to m our measurements as we shall do uh, later when we in a minute by the way okay. Uh, let's just look now at power coordinates, but before, let's just recall what are the Cartesian po coordinates. The Cartesian coordinates are very familiar to you. The Cartesian coordinates. How do you measure the position of a point in a plane? Well, you can use two rollers is one rover is a second rover is your point so what you do you measure the projections is one projection is a second projection usually you call this y you call this x okay this is our numbers they are units so you just say well to this point i name it x and y okay in mathematics however we, we don't actually use rovers. What we do is just introduce axes, a reference frame, which has some unit. It doesn't matter what unit it is for now. So you don't actually, in, in your drawing classes, you, 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 you would use uh, two rovers, but here, in mathematics, we just uh, abstract that idea and say, well, we have a reference frame or two axes. 
orthogonal axis, okay? And you use this orthogonal axis to give a name to the point. The name is two numbers. We are going to do the same thing in power coordinates now. In power coordinates, we have again the same point. I will draw it the here. And my, before, how, how do you do in draw your drawing classes? Well, if you choose the origin, you can use your ruler to measure the distance, right? You just measure the distance. So he is our ruler. And you can almost say, well, it's uh, uh, like this, right? So you measure the distance from here to here. Uh, and you just say, well, it's uh, about 20 centimeters. Okay, 20 centimeters of radius. And to measure now the angle, what you do? You use a proctator. Proctator, for those who don't know, is a device like this. It's a alpha circle. It uh, has a gradation in degrees, usually in degrees. And you just tr draw a line. And you say, well, it's about uh, 30 degrees. Okay? And now you have uh, two numbers. You have the distance, you have the angle. So that's power coordinates. Using just... Um, the, equi the, your, the equipment, a ruler and a proctator from your drawing classes. In mathematics, we don't use a proctator. What you do, is you, what you use in a, is an abstraction of a proctator. What is ab ab the abstraction? Well, it's a technique, so what you saw previously. Those strategies to measure the angles replace in our theory, uh, uh, replace the proctator. They play the role of the proctator, in our case. So, to m again, to measure now, the, the to assign to this point uh, the power coordinates, you have here again the point, we are going to do two things. First, we are going to draw a line, a smear line. Here's the origin, here's the line. The line could be drawn uh, in any other orientation, but for convenience, I will choose this horizontal line. This line is like a ruler, analogous to a ruler. He has some units. Here are the units. Okay. Now, we just introduce a circle. Like we done previously, let's assume that we measure this in radians. We introduce a circle. Here's the circle. He has a radius, a radius that we know because we have the ruler. Now you you draw the line connecting, and you measure the the arc length. Okay, is the arc length s? You know r. Let's call it for the moment big R. Okay. Well, and now you have everything. The angle is the distance, the arc length S that you measure divided by the radius R, so is the, the number, and the second number is the distance. Let's call it little r. From here to here, you have little r. Okay? Now you have the two numbers. You have r, little r, and theta are numbers at, that you attach to this point. Okay? If the point was here, you will repeat the same, pro the same procedure. Here is the line. You measure the arc length again. Divide the arc length by the radius. is the same, by the way. And now you have the, the angle r theta. However, there is a convention. The convention is the following. If the rotation that you have to introduce is counterclockwise, like in this case, theta is positive. It if if it, uh, the rotation is clockwise, then theta is negative. This is negative, here is positive. Okay? This method that we introduce here to assign two numbers the name of the point, or if you want better, the address of the point. 
this strategy that we use to assign this name to this point has one side effect. Let's see what the side effect is. Notice, here, if you give me x and y, well, everything is fine. You just walk along the, these axis, x units, and then y units on the vertical line. Okay, but in power coordinates, the same point with xy coordinates, the same xy coordinates, can have many names, many different names, r and theta. r is the same, but theta could be many angles. Why is that? Because, see, if, let's just assume for the moment, if theta is uh, pi, over, uh, pi over 6, let's assume that this is pi over 6, a small angle. If you don't see this, by the way, if it was, if the point was here, it would be pi over 2, so this is pi about pi over 6. Okay, if it is pi over 6, but you can add another full rotation, and you land on the same x-y coordinate. If you go around, you come here, okay, the x-y coordinates are the same. So, this another name for this point is also r but pi over 6 plus 2 pi. In radians, of course. I'm dropping the radians because I just told you that it's in radians. Or you could subtract. You could go like this. So this is minus. In fact, in general, any multiple of 2 pi r theta plus n 2 pi where n is an integer, positive or negative, that is, belong to z, is a good address for our, uh, for our point. Okay? So there are many, many, many names. Many names for the same point. In fact, uh, let's just look this from a different point of view. Let's just look at a different point of view. Uh, it's not essential that you uh, look at this from this in this way, but uh, I think it's useful to organize your head. Let's just look at the real line for a moment. Here is the real line. You suppose this is zero, and I put multiples of two pi, two pi, four pi, six pi, minus two pi minus 4 pi, minus 6 pi, it goes on forever. This is the line representing theta, the angle in radians, and now let's mark our angle. Let's mark all the names, okay? All the names. What are all the names? In green, pi over 6. Okay, it's pi over 6 here. A bit to the side of 0, no, is it? Then it's here, pi over 6 plus 2 pi, pi over 6 plus 4 pi, pi over 6 plus 6 pi, pi over 6 minus 2 pi, pi over 6 minus 4 pi, and pi over 6 minus 6 pi. Is this clear? So this distance is 2 pi. This distance is 2 pi. This distance is 2 pi. And this is distance is 6 pi. Okay? So, by the green dots, we have all the, all the, uh, the, the names or the addresses in power coordinates for this point with the same x and y. Let's choose another one. For example, pi over 2. Here it is. Pi over 2, pi over 2, pi over 2, pi over 2. Again, 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 again. Okay? Plus or minus 2 pi. Okay? More. Let's just draw now uh, one that is easy. Pi, just pi. Pi is in the middle, so it's easy. Like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. Okay? All 
the red points point to the same xy coordinate coordinate okay the same with the black and the 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 green okay now let's make this ob observation because every single time that you choose a point between 0 and 2 pi you have a corresponding one on the other segments the green the ear ear once you choose the green pi over 6 you have ear 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 and so on okay so you can define now the set the set is the set of pi over 6 plus n to pi where n belongs to z okay let's call it give, let's give a name to this set pi over 6 bar is a name of, the, of this set and this set contains all the points, green points you can do the same for pi over 2 pi over 2 bar is equal to pi over 2 plus n to pi n belongs to z again and finally the red ones is just pi pi bar equals pi plus any multiple of 2 pi with n belongs to z okay you can keep on going between 0 and 2 pi so in general in general you see theta bar is theta plus n to pi in, where, where n belongs to the in positive or negative integers and theta ranges between 0 and 2 pi okay this see this is all the possible sets that you can construct in this way each set contains all the possible names with the same xy coordinate okay so in a sense uh, if you make the union that is if you join you join all the members of all this set of uh, 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 all the angles in these sets you just reconstitute the entire real line I don't know if, you, if this, this is obvious it's like these sets create a partition they partition the entire real line okay uh, you can s say well these sets are contain the equivalent angles in certain sense these angles are equivalent okay because the, let me see the, uh, these numbers contain equivalent measurements for which are the same uh, measurements for the, that generate the same f f picture the same angle okay okay uh, okay let's just move on this is just a, a simple observation uh, let me just give an example by the way I forgot to give an example of this let's just give an example easy example for you to see how polar and Cartesian coordinates are related if you have the xy point equals to 1 1 what how d does it look like it looks like this this is 1 this is 1 okay now what is the power coordinates of this of this number well the r is quite easy r is this distance here well, but this distance must be square root of 2 because this is 1 this is 1 this is a triangle okay so r is equal to square root of 2 what is theta well mm, theta if you now draw the circle again let's go back to the circle here it is you can quickly see that it's one half of one third of a circle okay just like we see previously so the f for this case must be one eighth therefore the angle must be pi over four radians okay so 
you just convert it from power uh, from Cartesian to power coordinates. So this number has the address square root of two pi over four plus n to pi. Okay, any any n that you want to choose. Okay. Usually you can only uh, uh, usually when you attach uh, when you measure the angles. Uh, you usually only can do it for the simple cases, when it's a simple fraction of the entire circle. In the other situations, you, ju you just can't. You have to uh, use other means to get the angle. Okay? Now, let's just move on into... into, let's see... Okay, of course. We just talked about angles, but now let's talk about triangles. Let's just multiply everything by 3. So at triangles is probably the most useful part in practice. In practice, is the triangles are important. Let's just draw a general triangle. Here it is. You have the angles the angles and the angle measurements alpha beta gamma okay you have the, these three angles now we want to measure them what do you do to measure them well you bring them to a way in which they can be measured so you have here is our uh, uh, let's draw a, a alpha here it is our angle this is alpha and you have here the circle no okay you see i just rotated a little bit to bring this angle to here here it is this is a horizontal line okay and now you, i draw the circle and now what i do i measure s I measure the radius and the angle. Uh, the angle in this case is alpha. Alpha m must be S divided by R. Okay? Again, what, uh, what about beta? You do the same thing. Uh, beta, let's just, uh, let's just assume beta is 90 degrees. Right, 90 degrees. Let's make it 90, to be easier. This is 90. It is a right angle. So in this case of beta, like this. This is beta, again. Let's draw the circle again. Well, this is S. Well, but S divided by R, you know must that must be s divided by r must be f to pi radians but this f is what you you've seen it before this one fourth to pi radians which means this is pi over two radians okay that was one of the easy the easy ones this one i don't know Let's just look at the last one. The last one is like this. This is gamma. You again, you put the circle uh, centered. The circle is centered on this point. And now you just do again. You measure this S and divide by R. Okay? Okay. What I want to point out uh, with this example is the following, is that when we want to assign numbers to these, because it doesn't matter the orientation of our animal, let's say, you can rotate and put it conveniently, this can flip and put it here, and this is again can rotate and bring it here. That way, because the number that you attach to this angle is the same that you attach to this. The same as you attach to this, is the same as you attach to this, and so on. Okay? They are of the same species because the mouth is the same. 
Okay. Now, what can we say about these angles? It's a fact. It's a fact that the sum of all angles, alpha plus beta plus gamma, must be pi radians. Okay. This we know for all triangles. But you can say more in this situation. You know that beta, beta in this case is pi over 2. So, what can we say about al uh, alpha and gamma? Well, this formula implies that alpha plus gamma must be pi over 2. You just substitute, bring it to the other side, you get a minus, so pi minus pi over 2 is pi over 2, is a pi over 2. Now, I don't know what alpha and gamma are. I don't know the numbers. But whatever they are, they must satisfy, satisfy this equation. Okay? So this much, I know, this much I know. Let's consider an another example. Example where two sides... A and A are the same. So you have alpha, beta, and gamma. In this scenario, what can we say just all from the picture? Well, this is al always the same. You, can, you have to keep this. It's a fact. Alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal pi radians. But, because these two sides are the same, it means that alpha and gamma must be the same. So we know more. We know alpha equals gamma. What does this imply? Implies you substitute here, so you have 2 alpha plus beta equals pi rod. And that's it. That's all much you can say. Okay? With the information was given, this, this is how far you can go. Whatever uh, alpha and beta are, well, I don't know, but they must make this statement true. Okay? We can go further. Let's just assume that all sides are the same. All sides are the same. This is a very important triangle. make it so this is a this is a this is a this is alpha beta and gamma okay what can we say you you are almost guessing what I'm going to say again alpha plus beta plus gamma is the same but because these two sides are the same Beta and gamma must be the same. And because these two sides are the same, it means alpha and gamma must be the same. Of course, you can repeat this, the, the argument uh, and to say that alpha and beta must be the same. Okay? But you just need these two equations. Now, this implies, well, you just substitute gamma by beta no, uh, let's say, we beta by gamma, so you have alpha. Let me just do step by step. So beta comes here, so you have one gamma here, plus other gamma, and alpha becomes a gamma. Okay. But this is what? This is 3 gamma pi, which implies that gamma is pi over 3 radians. Okay? In this situation, we have enough information on the triangle that allow us to actually get a measurement from the end. Okay? It's all the same. Gamma is pi over 3. Well, but gamma is equal to alpha and gamma equals to beta. So pi over 3 is equal to alpha is, is equal to beta. Okay? On the other scenarios, you don't have the, that... Uh, you don't know enough about the triangle to... to to uh, to say anything, uh, okay. 
Uh, let's just consider one last example before we go. These are the special triangles that we are talking about. And we'll, we'll see why they are special later. Let's say a triangle similar to this, but with a right angle. This side, A, is equal to this side. This is a right angle. Okay? This is alpha, beta, and gamma, of course, is 90. So alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to pi. Okay? Alpha What is alpha? Alpha no. Uh, alpha no. Uh, gamma. Gamma is equal to pi over 2. Okay. And because these two sides are the same, it means that these angles are the same. Okay. Let's do it. You substitute here the gamma, you get the pi over 2 here. Well, this means as you subtract pi over 2 from both sides, you get instead of pi, you get pi over 2 here. Well, so you have 2 alpha equals pi over 2. Okay? Which means that alpha is equal to pi over 4, which is equal to beta. Okay? Of course, in radians. Okay? Okay, let's use just one last check, just to make sure that everything is okay on my notes. Okay, it's everything. Okay, this is all I have to say for the moment about these all these these angles. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Um, once again. It's important to put in practice these, these, what you learned today. I have some exercises on the notes. You can see the links uh, for you to, uh, and very important. It's very um, long term. It's very important to you to understand the concepts, to understand how ideas are connected. Instead of just memorizing formulas, try to understand the, the concepts, okay? Because Many ideas from one area of mathematics are similar to other areas of mathematics. So if you understand the concepts, you can see how things are connected later. It makes you easier to understand what you are doing. Okay? Well, that's all. See you next time. Goodbye.